Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 108. This episode is with Misty Rosas, who is so great, so nice, so talented, so inspiring. If you don't leave this episode super inspired to follow your dreams, regardless of what's in the way, then you're not listening. Misty was super cool. We talked about how competing in gymnastics growing up helped her later on in life. We talked about her getting her start in movies. She started doing creature work with Tim Curry and then Anthony Hopkins doing guerrilla creature work, which is what? On the deep end, right at the beginning. We talk about how she went on to uh, jump on moving trains and uh, get lit on fire in Van Helsing. Uh, We talk about how yoga has actually helped her in so many ways in her life. And you can't have Misty Rosas on and not talk about The Mandalorian. That's right. She was Queel, the Ugnaught voiced by Nick Nolte. Guess what? Misty was in the suit. We talk about that. We talk about what that audition was like. The fact that she came literally right out of ear surgery into the audition. What? We talk about our music, which is great. We talk about everything. Misty is so cool. You're going to love her. Check her out at Miss Misty Rosas on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Check her out on YouTube for her music. And uh, also check her out on this episode of The Interesting Podcast. Without further ado, please enjoy episode 108 with Misty Rosas. Theme song time. Week. was it last week it felt like a, a hundred years i know <laughs> that was a rough week for people so for real <laughs> and the new decade it's like there's this thing like i guess probably the same feeling people had when it was like 99 to 2000 you know what i mean like oh it's a new era just because i think 2020 yeah. sounds futuristic it's like oh right all right 2020 perfect vision right, right? You now it's just another day you know just one step at, at a time. That's so. right. That's really the only way to do it, you know. Yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> but you're so you're you're in California. Mhm. Uh-huh. That's good. Are you are you from there? Cuz I feel like a lot of people that uh, yeah. are from are yeah. in LA aren't from there. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, most people are transplants, but I'm a native. Um right my on. family is all down south in um San Juan Capistrano, California. Oh, right on. Dana Point. So, yeah. Pretty. Carl's back. So, yeah, yeah, I enjoy going to visit, but it's just uh, it's a slower pace. So you know, after a few days, like okay, I gotta go home. I yeah. got things I gotta do. So. Sure, sure. You're in the right town for that kind of drive. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm always I also doing stuff. I realized too, I don't vacation well. So after about three days, I get really antsy, and it's also I think a good thing too because you realize that you really enjoy what you do, so um, you don't need to escape from it. So that's true. That's true. I I feel like a lot of creative people are that way. You know, like we can't we can't really relax. Relaxing is like I could be doing something. So why am I not doing Mm -hmm. something? Yeah. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. So you grow. So I assume you grew up and then made the jump into like the career wise is the L.A. part. You're like, that's where the star is. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm one of my acting uh, teachers in college, Mark Majarian, he said um, to a few of us, he's like, if you want to do this, if you want, if you're serious, you need to be up there. You need to make the move and jump in with everybody. Like, you know, for in Orange County, it's just, you know, um, that's it, to me personally, it was uh, nerve wracking. This is a big town and a lot of talent and yeah. a lot of go getters. Like it's intense here. So, you know, I was just like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And <laughs> got to go just take the leap and go. <laughs> so I'm glad he, you know, um, kept pushing some of us to do that. So. Sure. Sure. What, so was that something that you always wanted to do? Like where, where did that interest start? Um, I think it's just my life and the journey. It just, I mean, it all, you know, comes together ultimately in the end. But uh, Mm -hmm. growing Mm -hmm. up, like I always loved music and I always loved singing and dancing. But I was also a gymnast and um, I was doing 
pretty well in that and excelling. So um, there came a time when the other activities like singing and dancing and all of that uh, took a very large backseat and it was, you know, uh, all, you know, gymnastics. So really, um, but really, uh, after I was done with that, um, and it was just kind of things just kind of fall into your lap. It, I wouldn't have booked my first job, which was Congo, if I wasn't training hard as a gymnast because you had to display um, like massive amount of upper body strength to show sure. that you're able to handle the weight of the suit, um, being in a head in the costume and being quadruped. So um, it's like... I got my career started because of gymnastics, but then I needed to kind of go back a bit and then train, train as an actor, train again as a dancer, train as a singer, you know. So I finally got there. Um, the way I got in was because of gymnastics. So, you know, everyone's like, well, do you have any regrets of starting so much later in life? It's like, no, you know. <laughs> yeah, it built up. It built up. Yeah. That's cool. What What gymnastics did you do? Um, I was just, I was, a. Uh, I did all, all four events. What? Yeah. All of it. So, Dude, yeah. did, did you have a favorite? Bars. Bars. Yeah. That's the, yeah. with the two. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, cool. So, yeah. So I always wonder, are injuries common in those sort of things? Cause when you see gymnastics, it's usually people that are really good at them. So you're like, all right, cool. Yeah. They're doing the sweet things, but you don't see like the getting too much air and flying across the room type stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, it comes with the territory. I remember I, when I was eight years old, I took my first hard fall on mm -hmm. beam, I was doing like a backward back tuck, and uh, my feet both, like when I landed, they were on one side, and so I slid oh. and hit the, my thigh really hard and flipped over. Oh, like, no. It wasn't a good <laughs> moment, but... You had to earn it. <laughs> no, <laughs> and that was the first, like, ooh, you could get really hurt, you know, doing sure. this. Sure isn't in it so right yeah. and you're like so. please back up on yeah. the bars so, yes uh, there's you know uh it comes with it there's definitely a risk factor sure so. sure yeah. that's cool so did you did you compete i did what so, yeah i was on the u.s uh elite gymnastics team so. what so. oh no big, no big deal yeah, it's whatever <laughs> really yeah man i mean that that I'm sure comes in handy later on with nerves because you've been dealing with did, nerves it, performing, it you know, it, it did and it didn't. Cause, um, I think as a, a individual, as a person, I always put a lot of pressure on myself and almost too much where I literally, um, I ruin it. You yeah. know, I'm so <laughs> nervous and I don't want to, you know, make a mistake or something. And so instead of actually being in the moment, I would just be, um, so nervous and all that goes with that just would, um, it messed with me for a long time. Like I needed to get out of that. And then I think too, um, that's why I enjoy, you know, the arts more cause, uh, it's just, just be there, just be there, be here now. <laughs> sure. Sure. It, so there are, I know nothing about gymnastics and I'm very interested. So there's routines that you do, right? Yeah. Do you make do you make up your own routines or does like is there a coach involved where you form a routine? Like how does how does that even work? It's the coaches. Um it's cool. you know, the, you know, you work as a team. Um Makes sense. You train certain skills and uh the skills, you know, have different difficulty values and whatever you've mastered for the most part you put that in the routine and yeah, we have I had male and female coaches. My female coaches, they uh helped with choreography so to speak on beam and floor and then uh my male coaches were on you know tumbling for floor vault and bars so ah, okay yeah. okay that's cool that's cool it's a, a thing yeah yeah <laughs> i hear you I, i'm getting the insider scoop now is how this stuff works that's right? cool so yeah so you got to be flexible for that kind yeah. of stuff i can't touch my toes so i'm mm -hmm. fascinated so were you was that something that like because when I think about people competing in those sort of things, I think about the, like in the movie, you know, the training montage, and it's like, you can't touch your toes, but then eventually you can. Yeah. And so was there like, was it harder to train as an actor later on or as a gymnast when you started? Because there are different parts yeah. of your brain. 
um, they're equally challenging in their own That's um, fair. discipline. That's fair. Because um, acting, you have to be courageous enough to really to let go and sure. to uh, expose yourself and be vulnerable. And, um, you know, where gymnastics, it's, it is, I mean, it's, it's a lot. It is, it's um, training. It's also the conditioning that goes with that. Like, you know, we had these conditioning circuits um, at the end of our training sessions all the time. Oh. And after that, it was stretching circuit. So, Man. you know, cause yeah, it was, um, it takes a lot of dedication. Yeah. So. It sounds like work. Yeah. Man. It was. And from it a was. young age too. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. So you were singing, by the way, I've listened to your music. I really like it. We'll get to that. I've had, oh. I've had paper house stuck in my head for like a week and a half. <laughs> I was like, my goodness. I'm like around the house. She's like, what is that? I was like, give me a second. My wife's oh. like trying to cook. Yeah. But <laughs> we'll get there. So you said you're singing, dancing. That was your thing. Then you got into gymnastics. So then acting, you got into later on. Now, okay. I've, I saw Congo as a kid. So mm-hmm. my favorite thing about like my show is I, I'll watch something. I'll be like, oh, that's really cool. And then I'll be like, I wonder what else they've done. And with you, I'm like, wait a what? That, that, <laughs> what? So I was very excited to talk to you because Congo is one of those, and actually Instinct, really, around that yeah. time. I was like, all right, yeah. all right, cool. You, you, you're killing it by the way. No, thank you. But Congo, that was your first movie? Yes. What? Yes. It was, what? Um, it's like one of those moments where um, just kind of uh, knowing the right people and being sure. at the right place, the right time, being the right height, the right, right. Uh, whole body structure and everything. And, um, and I mean, I at the audition, because uh, we auditioned, I think, four times. Uh, the first really? one was literally strictly about movement and to see your strength and to see how well, how coordinated you are for movement. Nice. The second one was an acting audition where, and, you know, they gave you two scenarios and they were not, you know, small ones. It was one um, that I remember because a friend of mine was waiting outside and she's like, was that you? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It was like, okay, we'll just, you know, kind of go about your business and, you know, they wanted to see again if you could really get uh, the movement down as far as walking quadruped because they gave us arm extensions even in the uh, right. audition. Uh-huh. And then he's like, at some point, I'm going to charge you and you have to be scared. And, you know, wow. it's, you know, in that moment, commit. And then the other one was, um, you know, then it was more aggressive. It's like, you know, stand your ground. I want to see how you would stand, stand your ground and charge me. I was like, okay. What? That's so, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fun audition. It was Terrifying, crazy. I'd imagine. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. So yeah, Not bad. that was my start. It was totally overwhelming because um, not only did we, you know, have to learn how to think and feel and breathe and move um, as a gorilla. It was just, yeah. uh, I'd never been, you know, on a set before. So it was just wow. like this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right into the deep end. Crash course in everything. <laughs> sure. So. Man, your first gig is like just off the deep end. Be like, now you're a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy there it. You go. <laughs> wow. Was that, because you were in a head, I imagine. Was that heavy? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I um, that was one of the things that really, because uh, the team that I work with actually on The Mandalorian is a lot of the same puppeteers oh, and no way. the fabricators and stuff that we worked with, um, not necessarily on Congo, but from Congo to Instinct. Um, mm-hmm. One of the amazing things that we got to do was go in and just chat about, okay, you know, what can we help you as far as this time around? The weight, I remember there was a lot of weight on the back of the head animatronically in Congo, and a note all the time was lift your head up, lift your head up, and it was just right. uh, being quadruped, you know, in a suit, you can't breathe, it's, it's hard, and then that extra, like, trying to lift the head and move is just like... Sure. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're not you're not so shaped that, that way as a gorilla to Yeah. Yeah. And so they made an amazing adjustment for us on instinct where they put all of those animatronics that were back there in the belly. And so it was just oh. this, it was brilliant. No yeah. way. 
genius. Uh-huh. You don't know until you know. That makes it so much easier because that, you can handle that weight a little easier than on the back of your head. Sure, so. especially with your arms down. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And to, and to share your first credit with Tim Curry, also pretty good. Oh, no, he was so nice. Not bad. He was so nice. We had so much fun. We would just sit like, together a lot on set. And he had a Tetris at the time that he would play with, and then he would get called on set, and he would give it to me, and I get to play with it. Oh, what? <laughs> That's cool. Uh-huh. What? Because yeah. yeah. you, but... got, you got to be Amy in that one in Congo, the Amy yeah. the gorilla. Did you – was that you? Because the scene that always stands out to me is the martini. It's like it wants a, it orders yeah. a drink. Was that you in the suit doing that? No, uh, that was, uh, I partnered up with uh, Lorene No. Oh, cool. um, I did all of the, the really physical, physical work and all the stunt work. Sure. Um, and she did more of the, um, it was just that really flow kind of movement. I didn't have that yet. I did not master that sure. well at first. And she just had it and she was brilliant. So um, we worked really well as a team and it was such a challenging job. There was just, they, the, you know, producers realized early on that that's gotta be, I don't think one person's going to be able to handle that. Sure. So, cause originally I was cast as a gray gorilla with all the guys. Oh, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> fun too. Cause I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, you stood your yeah. ground in that audition. They're like, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm, it was fierce. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's cool, though. See, they knew that you could handle the stunts because you'd fallen on bars before. They're like, oh, yeah. trust me. Like, she bounces she, back. You know, she'll be able to handle this. So Not bad. Yeah. Not so bad at all. Crazy. It was a good time. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And then you killed it enough yeah. to be brought onto Instinct, which I, yes. I'm sure had to have been a master class as well. We're going to Anthony Hopkins. I mean, oh my gosh. dude. I'll never what? forget. We were um, rehearsing because, again, uh, to be such a cohesive unit and, you know, you can't see well, especially in the animatronic heads, there's, vis- you know, virtually no vision. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we had rehearsals and then we, they flew us all into Florida and we had this oh. big conference space where again, we were just um, kind of going through all of blocking of scenes and stuff and rehearsing and everybody was on like just doing that and some people just it was just this random moment and then suddenly this crew of people came in and Anthony Hopkins was in it and we're like oh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you start just packing up quick it's here my heart and so um <laughs> they introduced all of us and like okay well um Tony is oh, just going to watch you guys for a little bit. He's studied what the group dynamic is in a guerrilla troop. Um, wow. And then he'll try and, you know, whatever he does, you know, who you are, whatever, you know, guerrilla, because everybody's, there's females and males and there's a silver back, there's a black back, and I was an adolescent male. Um, everybody kind of, has their own personality and the way that they would react. And it was just, again, it was like training with Anthony Hopkins and he was just so invested and he tried to come in. And of course my friend, Garen Michael, he was the silverback um, to protect their family. The silverback does, you know, a charge and this side by side um, display um, which basically, because they're nonviolent, um, and right. that's basically to help hit the family get away um, to safety. And it was just like, an, it was just this whole thing. Like they had a whole, um, it's not a stare down, but this moment of he just wanted to try to, Tony wanted to come in and join our family. And Garen's just not having it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so crazy. It was amazing. Dude, so, that's yeah. so cool. I'm so mm-hmm. into that process stuff and like building scenes and whatnot and like talk about nerves. Mm-hmm. Imagine that be like, right. you know, just Anthony Hopkins is just gonna watch you do it and then try to play, and you're like, ah, yeah. okay, it well, because so it was one of those moments where because he was just so kind and um, respected our process and what we were bringing to it as well. So sure. Um, there was no arrogance whatsoever. It was just like, hello, you know, yeah. and, uh, 
I won't tell you guys when I'm, you know, what I'm going to do. Um, but you know, we'll just work this all out. And I'm just like, yay. Right. Right. <laughs> Man, so, you helped build a yeah. scene. That's so I know. cool. And my character was the one that got to walk up to him. Yeah, um, it is. You know, and, and check him out and stuff. So that was really fun to shoot. Dude, so. what is your life? And that's in the beginning. That's like your first <laughs> yeah, couple right. ones. Man. Mm -hmm. Good thing you did all those gymnastics. It's like you, you built the tolerance, you know? I know. Thank goodness for 18 years of gymnastics. So oh, 18 years. <laughs> My goodness. <It's> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when you started into acting, did you think that you'd be a gorilla for so long in the beginning? <laughs> um, no, I just didn't, I didn't even know, um, cause my first job ever, uh, was performing, uh, I auditioned for Disneyland. Oh, um, what? And it just so happened that Fantasmic was, you know, auditioning for people. So no that was way. my first, you know, start in, in performance art and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, and that was amazing fun too. I mean, first job ever. It's just, I mean, yeah. especially during the summer I spent, all day there, I would do the Lion King celebration in the afternoon, take a break, and then I come back and do Fantasmic in at night. So it was what? a pretty fun day to, yeah, you know. <laughs> Dude, were, were you in suits for that? Like you're one of the mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, in the Lion King, it was one of the the birds, which are the pole climbers. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and then in Fantasmic and some of the other parades and stuff. I usually my height range is Donald and Daisy Duck height range, but and Minnie Mouse. No and then deal. every once in a while they would throw me in to Mickey if um someone, God forbid, um would get injured during the show. Like I was a swing for the Mickey um, you know, parts. So yeah, yeah. which was nerve wracking. That was again one of those moments where as a gymnast, like just stay calm and I'd be like trying to remember and re-rehearse like what the choreography was sure i would always get notes yeah. after the show. <laughs> i did my best i'm sorry that's right so. yeah. got it got it got it sorry sorry yeah. i was i was, I I was in donald you needed mickey <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's cool so what's hotter than being in one of those suits in the disneyland or being in an animatronic gorilla animatronic gorilla yeah so. yeah mm -hmm. There's a whole <laughs> uh, muscle suit that you put on. Then you put on the hair part. Oh, and then you're just there's covered layers. The there's no, like, once they shut the mouth and most animatronic heads, there's not really air coming in. So, Ooh, yeah. Man. You're just in there sweating. <laughs> yeah. And are you blind in that? Mm -hmm. you... Really? Yeah, it depends on what head. And obviously, they make stunt heads um, for a lot of your physical stuff and physical work. So, and you can see a little bit out of those, but still, it's it's very minimal. So. Wow. Yeah. I, again, deep end. Let's just make it difficult. <laughs> yeah, throw her in. Wow. It's like this is awesome. I don't know what this is, but that's right. I just remember saying, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, I've I've got suit work experience from I I work at Disneyland and then <laughs> I remember my first fitting um and the first time they put the animatronic head on for Congo and I was like oh, you can't see <laughs> like, what have I done <laughs> uh, I was so fortunate because I worked with um John Alexander and Peter Elliott who are masters in uh gorilla artist work so yeah I got trained by the best of the best, and we learned. Uh, I trained with John Alexander a lot to prepare and learn how to work blind. So smart. It's a good skill to yeah. have. Comes in handy. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So when you're when you're in a gorilla suit, so I, when you're doing the auditions and stuff, you get I imagine what looks kind of like crutches. Like I think I've seen those before as like the arm extensions. Mm -hmm. When you're in the gorilla suit, is it the same way? You have like handles for the arms in there, like. They're a little different um, because the their wrists obviously flex, and right. so you have to learn how to. We have like a a little pulley trigger system, so that mm -hmm. when you lift you you know an arm up, uh, you pull that so it has that flow to it. Ah. So and, and sometimes if you pull too fast, like you just go kink kink oh. and just, <laughs> just eat it, it. The <laughs> or if your body weight was too far forward, they would just buckle on themselves. I, I so would like to see, I would like to see those outtakes. 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but again, I mean, it just they would lock them off on um, when we had to do some of the running stuff. Um, you know that. Oh was yeah, you had to move in fast in them. Scenarios. So yeah. My goodness. Well, yep. that's the job. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah, it's like it I t- was- take it for advantage. You're like, all right, you can kind of the small stuff, but you don't think. No, when you gotta like move with those. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well it done. Was, it was nuts. I mean, I just remember on Congo when we were shooting, and my heart again. Thank goodness for gymnastics yeah. and <laughs> learning in the moments when your heart is pounding. Um, and they're like, okay, here we go. And it was the whole, um, volcano eruption scene. Right. And we're running through and everything is breaking apart. And it's like, you know, they made it. So the set pieces were doing this. Um, and then they told me once we were running away and once I got to a certain area, they're going to trigger the um explosives that the floor <laughs> collapses and so i'm thinking things like just ride the right ride the right yeah. <laughs> you get lost just stay to the right oh my um, god so yeah it was just like okay so yeah first job. Defense. <laughs> first, first set and it's like yeah was, also things are exploding so just you know, be Slowly, careful. Or <laughs> is caving in, you know, just like okay. Wow. <laughs> so did that did that give you a taste for stunts? Did you wanna did you wanna do more stuff like that coming from it? Yeah, I mean, um, I love the stuntmen and the coordinators and everyone that I met um, on that set. There, they were just like, you should, you know, do stunt work because of your height, and then you'd be great for kids and this and that. Sure. Um, yeah. So kind of from there it wasn't I some of this don't work like I love it but um again from my childhood and stuff and the stresses of you know getting injured um that comes up for me and so there's some things that I will say no to other things like I don't know in the moment I've just done you know much to my mom's horror (laughs) um but uh yeah I mean it was it was kind of a smooth ride into that for me too it was challenging because my body type is really really muscular and you know trying to double kids they're tiny yeah (laughs) so i'm not necessarily i will fully admit um i'm not built well (laughs) for that so for children i mean that's fair it'd it'd be strange if you were you know what i mean yeah exactly (laughs) so it's like i'm kind of glad yeah yeah Ten-year-old boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably best. <laughs> probably best at the end of the day. You know, <laughs> I'd have a lot more questions. Uh... <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I'll I'll do stuff, but um, just uh, my body just isn't. It's too muscular. You know, I just don't fit in the wardrobe. And sure. you know, sometimes that when they're in a jam or whatever, they need someone. Because I remember this one job. Um, it was on Kevin. Uh, what is why am I blinking? Um, it was a movie called Rails and Ties, and they needed oh. someone, teeny tiny, to double boy, to run with a train. Um, and then once the staircase thing, you know, once I saw that, you know, catch up to it and jump and grab it and get what? on. What? Now, mind you, like it was totally uneven terrain and stuff, and it's like, oh. you know, she's a bit heavier than the little kid, but she's probably the only one that's going to be able to handle this and not kill herself. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so. Wow. Catch a moving train. Sure. Yeah. Kevin Bacon's movie. And yeah. You know there you go. One <laughs> wow. So, yeah, one degree. One degree away from Kevin Bacon. Good job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he yes. did it. You beat the yep. game. I did. Man. So close. Again, again, from the beginning. It ca- you get uh, to be in a gorilla suit running and things are exploding. Uh, catch yep. a running train because why yeah. not? Mm. Wow. Not bad. <laughs> not, not, yeah, yeah. Not a bad way to spend your day, I guess. No. Man. No, it was fun, actually. Again, the, that doing that, it was just like, if you're going to fall, fall to the right, fall to the yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I feel like if you ever wrote like a memoir, that should be the title of it. You know, just fall to the right. That's right. It, it can have so many meanings, and by the end, just figure out ways to tie it in. I'd buy it. Just tie it at the end. One hundred percent. I'd buy it. Wait, did, so, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you work on Bedazzled? 
I did. Because I yeah. really like that movie. The movie was hilarious. Thank so. you, right? I don't know many people that's seen it, and I'm like, guys, listen, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I dug it. I dug it a lot. I dug it a lot. So Me too. I enjoyed that one. So you, yeah. you've done stunts in quite a few things. What would you say, I mean, it's hard to compete with catching a moving train and exploding in a gorilla suit, but is there right. is there a particular stunt that you've done that kind of stands out where you're like, that was close, or like a particularly dangerous one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, working <laughs> right on Van Helsing. Oh, uh, what? Yes. You worked on yeah. Van Helsing? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. What'd you do that? The, what you do on that? One of the dwergy, um, those oh, little sweet. tiny, like Dracula's little. Yeah. Little, workers in his lair um there we did a lot of fire burns at the it was our last day and um (laughs) again like i didn't tell my mom what i was doing on that day (laughs) always best yep Um, like uh, i did a full body burn and i was on a ratchet so there's like a whole timing thing and um chad stahelski was uh, right with me um, and the, we, I thought we had our timing, right? Um, I said, you know, oh, no. okay, just give me three seconds to take my huge inhale. Cause then you got to take a breath in and then you, you know, are, are holding a straw in your mouth just for air. Um, and then clam down on the straw, light me, and then, you know, get pulled across the, um, stage. Well, he lit me, um, when I was still taking my inhale and I knew, that if I exhaled, like that would be it. Like I would, oh, you know, no. my lungs, I would, I would be gone. Um, so oh. in that moment, because obviously the fire, like you're it's on good, fire, like it's right to the oxygen. Ooh. I literally just instinctively knew just buy down, hold your breath, you know, take the ride. And then when they were putting me out, obviously I was coughing and they're like, oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? It's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I think oh I didn't want to freak anybody God. out, but yeah, that was a, a close call for mist. <laughs> and so then I went back to Chad. and was like, okay, Listen. let me give you a thumbs up when I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so, Mr. 8711, I got well, words for you. I was like, all right, Chad. Um, yeah, we need to <laughs> we need a si- We need a hand signal Sorry, thing here. <laughs> wow. So. That's mm-hmm. nuts. You've been fully on fire. Yeah. What? Crazy. And then got... Mm-hmm. Jerked back. Wow. Yeah. Not bad. on a wire. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Wow. That one was nuts. I still have like, that was a close one. That was sure. Close one. Man. Yeah. Good thing and clamping like down there. It's on my shoulder. Going, yeah. Bite, honey, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bite the straw. <laughs> yeah. I got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. My goodness. I can't. What's. So, how many times did you have to do that? How many times have you been on fire? Just that one time. That's only wow. fire. Um, we did, I did, I think, three each direction. First time they picked me, like, up at my chest and just went, you know, and flew that way. Yeah. And then picked me from my back and, you know, flew Everywhere. that way to get <laughs> options. So. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, six man. times on fire that day. So. Oh, Mm -hmm. what is it like being on fire because i feel like it's different (laughs) i um the sound yeah Uh, is it weird the sound is you know and then obviously you're in tons of nomax and this really really cold gel um oh yeah i can't even describe it because you know my eyes like uh it's just everything's covered so it's a very intense like moment and then you have to stay calm you just have to otherwise sure. again that's not going to go well if you, you pan i mean fair and yeah you need to make sure your signals and everything to the coordinators and fire safety and stuff are very clear yeah. um yeah <laughs> wow it's very a pretty cool hot. thing to be able to say that you've been on yeah. fire you're like yeah you know. i guess the sound would be like um if you're going, you know, 40 or 50 miles an hour on the freeway, stick your head out, and this is, you know, kind of Really? Sound. What? Yeah. That's, mm. that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Being on fire. That is just, I don't, 
I don't have words. I don't have words. That's crazy. <laughs> and getting jerked back. You're not just on fire and like running. You're on fire and then being like whoop, tossed. Yep, being yanked across the stage. Man. So, so you're probably yeah. on paper, you're probably pretty aerodynamic. You know, you're yeah, like gymnastics, I think you know. So. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. Like the wing velocity mm-hmm. of a lawn dart. You're like, please I can ah. do whatever you need. <laughs> 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 on fire or otherwise. That's, <laughs> I think that's the key to longevity. That's why you've done so well. You're very talented. You're driven. You've been on fire. That's the, yeah. that's the th- that's the other triple threat that people don't tell you about. Yeah, yoga. I yeah, think yoga. That's true. Yes. Oh, so did it's you yoga. Did, did you do yoga growing up, or when did you get into no. that? Um, I my puppeteer on the movie Co- The Country Bears, Alice. Oh uh, right. Uh, after that job, that was it was it was amazing, but it was so hard. I bet. Uh, my body hurts. <laughs> and she's like, have you ever done practiced yoga? I was like, no. And so she took me to my first class and then oh, cool. I was like instantly hooked. Like I love it so much that I took nine weeks off from my, you know, career, you know, again, which my mom's like, honey, I don't think that's a very good idea. What are you doing? <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel a calling mom and I feel like there you go. karmically it's my way of giving back um, sure. to people uh, to help them discover you know for themselves what it is they want and literally you're physically opening your heart so you know find what you're passionate about so so i started in um 2002 oh wow since then yeah and then i started teaching in december of 2006 so man yeah it's my job yeah you gotta be pretty good was it was was there a learning curve with that because i because a lot of people i feel like when they start it it's like I'm going to get into fitness and yoga is their like way in, whereas you mm-hmm. had been very physical up until now. Was yoga as hard as I think it is for you when you started? No, probably not. Um, and I remind people that too. It's just um, put yourself in your little yoga bubble. Yeah. Um, you know, we tend to be, you know, ego is what, you know, you see all these people and you're trying to keep up with them and trying to mm-hmm. do what they're doing. It's like, your journey is, you know, yours. the beautiful thing about it is yours. So, yeah, I don't really, and it's like, I have been training, I, my, I took my first gymnastics class at two and a half. So what? I've been, like, physically active and in all of that pretty much my whole life. So I just remember <laughs> I was at a class like, recently, and I felt really bad, and I was, like, just, like, saying, please let at least one more person come in. It was just me and this guy and uh he was you know right next to me and um yeah like it was just it was hard because i could tell he's trying to keep up and you know physically like my body strength and my flexibility it's something i do now for um obviously like you said longevity Mm -hmm. um my career is so physically demanding that i was really broken and really hurting um the country bears and it's like this isn't good what am i gonna do and so it's a lot of physical therapy and a lot of yoga for you know many 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 years now it's just yoga so yeah okay okay and there's di- correct me if i'm wrong I, there's different kinds of yoga mm-hmm. okay okay and yes. which one do you do um i teach and you know i do half and half i teach and practice speak from yoga which is in the hot room um, oh yeah that one is very Ooh. intense but um it accelerates your healing process so sure. that's why i recommend it and i tell my students too it's okay to branch out i mean just because you're going to a different type of yoga practice it's all based on hatha yoga postures so right. you know go 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 elsewhere and you know you're going to learn something from everyone that you encounter who teaches you so that's really yeah. cool so, but I also uh, practice down the street from where I live, and Perfect. that studio, um, it's more Ashtanga flow, which is a lot of the sun salutations and chaturangas, but all of that right now with the Mandalorian, like, I just need that type of core strength. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. So. Man, that's pretty neat. I, I like that idea, and also, like, specifically, like, the hot room stuff, it adds a mental as well as the physical. So like yes. you're doing the yoga, but also like, it's going to get hot. And then you have to, yeah, it's doing a lot. Panic. They um, get, I'm always very aware that my students, um, when they're in there, um, 
they all turn into children again, you know? Yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful no, way. No, it's, but the, it's the, stripped um, away. The wall comes up and the defiance and, you know, the hands on the hips. And just as like you're in your head, can you just relax your arms and just, just be still? And if you can't calm down and be with your breath, just sit down. It's, you know, kid, let's keep it simple in here. And I always try to stay really calm with them because I know what they're going through. Right. Uh, and all of the chaos in the head. So. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a smart thing to get into and it, it's doing both things for you because you're getting the kind of de-stress from everything that's going on but then a different kind of stress with what you're doing but it's building up it's i see what you're doing here i see what you're doing here. <laughs> it's smart it's very yeah. very smart and what? i will be honest um i feel that the reason um that i like i clicked so well with um quill uh is my yoga journey like he is you know very wise and very um you know i have spoken was the yeah. audition and Ooh. you know i think too is just to see um if i understood the character from that moment because he's not it's not arrogant he's not being disrespectful he just simplifies everything in life and it's just like you know i have spoken you know yeah you know, Talking about this don't complicate it don't overthink it and so uh that was definitely born of my yoga journey so. that's so cool <laughs> Dude, what, what was that audition like uh, it was intense because uh i i was actually at the time having issues with my ears like i was born with uh uh 65 percent hearing loss in my right ear no way. Uh, and then my left ear has suffered because i've always had to put ear pieces in my left ear um to wow. do all this so i was having drama and i rely on my left ear more than my right and i couldn't put the hearing aid in that i <laughs> literally rely on yeah uh, just having a really rough moment in the summer of 2018 and uh, I thought that I was going to get to go to my ear doctor, that it was going to be cleared, and I, they could put it back in, and then go to my audition uh, later that afternoon. And I walked out of my appointment, and I called my agent. I was like, I can't hear well. You know, I don't know. Um, should I go to this audition? It's a cold read, so I don't know the dialogue. And, you know, it's just, I was just like, mm, I yeah. really, really want to go. And she's like, just go, just go. And if you can't hear, just ask him to speak up. It's like, all right. <laughs> so <laughs> I went in early. Um, I called my agent and asked, do you think, can you call and ask if I can come in early just to get familiar with the script and stuff? And I can read lips really well. Nice. So it was like, if I get into trouble, just like, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't want to do that because it would be taking me out of the scene. But, right. uh, you know, no, it just, uh, I remember being in the waiting room and I read through the script a couple of times and I just had this like heart opening moment of, I know this character, I know him from my life experience. Cause you know, yeah, I mean, the whole of it looks like it's just been amazing. But what I can say is in the, the, January, February, March, April, May of 2018, mm -hmm. everything that could possibly go wrong was like going wrong. And um, I was like walking dogs, but I couldn't do that because I failed my first dog leash. Test. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, you know, delivering groceries to, you know, people and just trying to keep my head above water. You yeah. know, it's like, what is happening? And, you know, I know why I did it. Like, I gave all my money to, all of my music, you know, as an independent artist and, yeah. you know, and so I owned it, but again, it was just like, Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> so it's just, I know, um, I know what it is to fight for your freedom. Yeah. So, yeah. Dude, that's pretty good. So it was like <laughs> at full scenes and stuff like that. That's cool. It is, yeah. It's interesting when you get a script like that, when you're like, Oh yeah, no, I get this. It's just like <laughs> something clicks. Something, yeah, I was just like, yeah, I mean, um, it was a good moment. It felt good to be like, I know, I just, I know the depth of this character. And, you know, and then obviously, too, a lot of times when you go in to read, they will give you a line that will be a telling 
moment of does this actor really know and understand this character sure so so when did they tell you that you were gonna be in a suit um it was a while let's see i think i got my news it was right before just everything again I thought I, once I got my um, deal memo from my agent, I was like, oh, yes. like my everything is changing now. And then right. my ears gave me one more lesson moment. Like literally I had, I think, a week of be, just being able to relax for a second. And then um, I had to go in because they couldn't figure out what was on my eardrum. And um, they tried to do surgery it didn't go well. Like I had to have three surgeries in one oh, day. No. Um, in the midst like, of yeah, all they that. sent me home after the first one. And, um, I got like halfway down the 10 freeway and I could feel something and I just thought it was going to be medicine. And I did that. And I'm like on the freeway and it's blood. Oh and no. And so I pulled over and I called my doctor. was like, what should I do? I just want to go home and take a nap. And she's like, no, 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 no. You need to go back to the hospital. Um, and it's like, I don't want to, I don't want them to touch my ear again. And, uh, so then they, more doctors came in and I had one, another surgery. Then they just sent me to the the waiting room for 20 minutes to see if it was going to be okay. It wasn't. And I was like, they're like, sorry, honey, you have to come back in. You know, we're going to try to put, um, it's a medicine that they use for when they're doing massive, you know, surgeries. So internally, um, you wouldn't be bleeding. So it was just, yeah, it was a rough moment. And the day after that, um, I got a call from the promoter that I work with at the Rose and they're like, Hey, do you want to open for air supply? And of course I'm like, yes. (laughs) And and this is like the day after surgery. And I'm like, (laughs) And I texted friends. I was like, I don't know. What should I do? And, you know, it would be a week before I'd even know if I could hear at all wow. again if I left here. So, but I said yes. And I'm like, of course, I'm just going for it. I'm going to get good news next week and everything's going to be fine. And then it was. So, yeah. Dude, I love that. 2018, it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> Man, it's the law of equivalent exchange. You know, it's like you've got the the worst to make way for the best. Oh, it was crazy. It's like, you know, I mean, people, I always tell them, like, if you're having a really rough moment, you know, don't fear it. There's always, there's something to learn from it. What I learned from that one is, man, I have no idea. I don't know what um, is going to happen in a week, but this is what I want. This is what my heart wants. This is what my spirit wants. So I'm saying yes, and I'm going to stay positive and just do everything I need to do. And, you know, and we'll just see in a week. And I'm sure if it was something that had turned out (laughs) awful, um, air supply and Zach would have, would have understood. So sure. (laughs) Wow. That's yeah. a, that's amazing. It, that's inspiring as well, and I think says a lot about you as a person. That even going through all that, you're like, no, no, like you push through. Where I feel like a lot of people might not have been able to, but you're like, nope, you got oh, this. It's like I'm not giving. Up. Yeah, man. <laughs> Go ahead, throw everything at me that you can. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's also amazing that like you are making your own music as well. When yeah. when you can't hear a lot, so it's like wow, yeah. you didn't even let that stop you. No, wow. it didn't go well at first. I should have probably told my record producers earlier, but I didn't. I was afraid they wouldn't work with me if they knew like the depth sure. of yeah. my <laughs> hearing loss. Um, so now they're really they're gentle, and they just uh, for me as a hearing impaired person, um, like my brain literally, I have to concentrate so hard to really try to fine pitch center that sure at a certain point um it just because i'll suddenly get super super pitchy and they're like yeah your brain's done today so <laughs> just, you know let's take what we have today and we'll you know finish tomorrow it's like, there okay. you go there you go <laughs> i just gotta that. do what you gotta do <laughs> yeah and i love that like it doesn't seem like there's any part of your brain that's like eh, maybe not you know what i mean you're like no you that's got all. that drive and it's like even amongst all the other things you're like no we just we keep on going. Yeah, it's just what I do. It's something that I've um, 
always loved to do. So, you know, yeah, I can remember when I was a little kid and my poor parents, it's been just like a difficult child. Yeah. <laughs> um, they had this amazing, beautiful stereo and I was obsessed with it. Like I would just put on, they would put on records for me and I just like have my ear up to it, <laughs> just taking it in. But I would touch, you know, it was delicate and I would touch and break things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you touch and break it one more time. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I touched it and I broke it one more time. <laughs> So. Like, listen, mom and dad, this is my process, oh, right? This is my thing. This is my thing. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that bass? Yeah, that's that's, right? yeah. that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> right out of ear surgery into uh, Star Wars. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, I was nervous about that, too. It was like, I just got the most amazing job of my life. And it's like, this, you know, and that's another thing I, you know, I always you know think of the positives like I don't think the universe works that way I don't think that you know it would give you something and then just like no just kidding haha sure sure yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) so yeah at the end of all of it they found out you know what was happening everything's fine and you know it's like okay and just killed it you just killed it that's what happened (laughs) Dude, what? So it, the quill's head is that heavy, and how does that compare yeah. to like you've worked with animatronic heads before? How yeah. does how does this one compare to ones you worked with before? Um, it's yeah, the weight of it because uh, you didn't see it. I think um, all the time, but the backpack that I wore right. uh, that is was filled from top to bottom with all of the animatronics. And oh. I have like, I don't know how many wires like right behind my neck. So they would definitely, they would spread them out for me. So I had a little bit of motion. Um, and then on each side, those pockets that were, you know, pretty big, those were batteries. So really? the weight of him rode on my shoulders. So it was, uh, again, a lot of core strength. So just pull the belly in. Yeah. And do- <laughs> oh man could you see at all in him oh yeah yeah those are my eyes no way yeah just what? with a really cool uh full eyeball yeah pockets. so that's so cool yeah so wow i could see um a yeah that was nice. <laughs> but it was just a, it was a weird thing because i could see but you know it was hard still to communicate because my face is way back there and it's like can you open the mouth <laughs> right <laughs> oh, so, man. so d- there's no air i imagine no what? especially in that one because it's latex um sometimes oh. like um with the other you know with gorillas and stuff like sometimes you can feel a little bit of the breeze kind of coming through especially on instinct they helped us out a little bit and um gave us a, a lighter hair tech around the cheeks of the gorilla because that's where our eyeballs are so oh okay okay yeah and the gorilla suits the eyes are up in here you open the mouth and our eyes are there so. oh that's cool yeah so you Man. have to like, bring your chin down <laughs> sure did so was it difficult writing a blurg in the suit no luckily they were amazing they saved me in that um the saddle, um, I put the weight of the backpack. Oh, on smart! That. So that gave me some, you know, shoulder, neck, back reprieve. So that was nice. So that's cool. Uh, it was. I had with it was Deb's episode, which was very intense. Oh, um, tell me about uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a day, and it was just uh, me and me. <laughs> on you know on this set with this unit on the blur all day long and it was right. a lot of you know running hard like that and i mean my legs are not exactly long so i was squeezing <laughs> for dear life holding the baby and you know animatronic baby is heavy so this arm oh <laughs> And then holding the reins, I'm just like, oh my god! You're like, don't drop so, him! <laughs> like at the end of every scene, like I would hold on to, it, but I just lean back and was like, give me a second, I need to catch my breath. <laughs> so, yeah. You just remember, That's... fall to the right and don't drop the baby. Boom. Yeah, I would need to fall to the right. See? Yep, I have that in my head. There's I can't a theme. Fall on the baby. There's a so. theme. So the ba- the 
Baby Yoda. You've held him. He's heavy? Yes. Um, yes and no. I mean, he's heavy when I'm in my costumes and holding him, too. So it's just like sure. more weight and lots of wires everywhere between the two of us. Um, yeah, he's got weight to him. So and just oh, he melts my heart. So cute. He's so. Pr- pretty amazing. And the best kept secret ever. I but know. Pretty good. I was really happy that they were able to carry that off. So. I know. I know. And then, you know, yeah. Quill, man, what a character. What a <laughs> yeah. character to play. It's amazing. Yeah. So what would you say was the biggest challenge with Quill specifically? Um, I mean, because I'm used to no air and I'm right. used to weight <laughs> and I'm used to heavy. Um, I think it was just keeping him weighted. Thank goodness for the weight. <laughs> Um, cause he's a little old man. And so it's just like <laughs> trying to find that grounding and keep him weighted. Um, everything came really natural, you know, it's just, a, a challenge at first, but my puppeteers and I, cause we worked together off and on so much that our team was really quick to, you know, coordinate sometimes some of the sets and some of the, you know, lighting in it was really dark. So it was hard for them. I would always try really prepared beforehand um, because I would need to give them some sort of gesture or a signal so that they could trigger the dialogue here and there. Sure. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, coordinating Nick Nolte's voice, my, you know, what I'm doing in the scene. And then I had three puppeteers um, triggering the vocal tracks for the mouth, but also puppeteering the mouth and the eyebrows and everything. It was... um, you know, it, it, it is complicated, but for us, like everybody, we were so proud and we wanted it so bad. So we really, really, really focused and, you know, worked really hard. Some, I mean, usually the first few takes in some of the scenes, which were heavy dialogue or something that was, um, would not go well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. He's like, I'm sorry. I couldn't see your hand or your hand motions. Like, it's okay. It's okay. We'll get it. We'll get our flow. Right. So, I mean, that's yeah. a lot of plates to be spinning at the same time. It was a lot. So, and I knew that going in. So, um, you know, I was uh, always like, I knew my dialogue. I mean, that was the last thing on my mind was, you know, the dialogue. It was bringing all of it together sure so, yeah so you did the dialogue that's cool did so did you say they had nick nolte's dialogue already mm-hmm. done yeah really? that was beautiful um but we wouldn't get it until the morning of oh. so like, i would know you know my scenes really well and that was always uh nerve-wracking for me but it was that moment of okay you know take a moment and breathe because we would have the private rehearsals with John Favreau and um, like our and Boz and everybody. And I wouldn't be in the suit. I would just be missed. Oh, and cool. uh, I was just like, stand your ground, hold your ground. And, yeah, you know, yeah. just, be just calm, do be the calm. scene. I can do this. I can do this. I belong here. I belong here. I belong yeah. Here. yeah. So, um, I did say that was the most nerve wracking for me. It's just, um, I bet the private rehearsals, just like my heart pounding and yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what? my guys would also watch then and kind of get a feel for the timing of things. And, um, then after private rehearsal, we would run to the, um, the puppeteer station <laughs> And uh, I would listen on headphones and Nick Nolte would give, you know, a few um, goes at each line and different, you know, um, energetically he would punch certain words or whatever. And so we'd listen, listen, listen. And then we would put together what we thought would be good. Then the director would come and listen and, um, you know, arrange it. And then just like put everything on and then go out there and do it. What? So, That's so yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Hey, what is your life? You know, you think about this. <laughs> you've been gorillas. You've worked with and you've worked with Anthony Hopkins, Tim yeah. Curry, and then you're in Star Wars being voiced by Nick Nolte. I know. I mean, what? Dude. What is happening? <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, yeah, I just yeah. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful. You know, yeah. And he, on top of this, you're creating music. 
Like yeah. you're, you're even doing your own thing. It's like normally people would sleep, but you're like, listen, I got a song <laughs> in my heart that needs to be out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I know I did that. Um, I recorded uh, Paper House during my break um, uh, in between. Then it's not a break, which... Misty. That's not how right? breaks work. Yeah. <laughs> there was part of me that was like, mm. you know, when, I, when it was recording day, I was like, maybe I should have taken a break. But <laughs> the, you know, the song and the message and stuff, it really is about being that battle that we, you know, all have internally about, um, for me, metaphorically, you know, paper house, um, you know, people, I, I always love it too. Like I always try not to give too much of what I, you know, see, but for me, it reminded me of, um, the Barbie dream house, you know, yeah. as, okay. I can um, see it. I can see it. you know, as a young kid growing up, like, my brown eyes, my brown hair, my height, um, the fact that I can't hear. Uh, there are just a lot of things that, you know, made me feel like I wasn't, you know, quite enough. And so, you know, I hid a lot. Um, sure. Yeah. So Paper House for me represents that. Like you can get pulled into all of these labels and all these words and you can freeze there, you know. But uh, like for me, just yoga and listening to and really listening to your heart and the things that you want to do yes you know people are going to say things to you and they will sometimes be unkind I don't never I've kind of flipped it now where it's like I know that they don't mean to say it when people say things that are unkind generally that comes from um something that's happened to them too so you know, that's what Paper House was. So it is heavy. Um, I do like the fact that you can hear like this kind of fatigue sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, that works. That works. <laughs> sure. I dig it a lot. And I also what I like about your music as well is like it's not one thing because you've yeah. got like you've got Paper House, you've got Panic Button. And it's like during these different songs, they can all be like almost borderline different genres sometimes you're like yeah. oh is this it's like i love the the versatility that you have that not a lot of people have really well see what challenging about that is um i've approached different publishing companies and stuff with my music and the feedback is is it's too different you know you don't have crazy this streamlined thing but i don't mind i was like well to be honest um, I want people's ears to perk and, and hear different things yeah. and go on this journey with me when I do live shows and to have them have a moment, you know, with panic button where they feel really empowered, but also, you know, come up and say, yeah, I really felt your song only love is forever. And, you know, I have some, a friend that is also, you know, has gone too soon. So, you know, it's just, yeah. That dynamic that, and I don't mind that. You yeah, know, I love you that. my money, and it's not necessarily. They're like, "Well, are you bummed that you did that?" And it's like, "No." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, just again, it's about your art. That's so. right. That's yeah. what I love about it because that's what comes through in your music. Is like you're uh -huh. a yeah. very multifaceted person, and mm. it comes through. Like I like that a lot because it's almost more human than like being the marketable version you know what I yeah, mean yeah I mean I'm just like I'm not I you know obviously I'm not that anyway so why try to be something I'm not agreed so, and I will say I mean that happened too uh because I've been working with friends and stuff that have approached me more recently it's like how did you get here you know how did this <laughs> happen and it's like um you know I mean it's been a long journey um but it's just like streamlined for yourself um I was telling friends that I went to the Chinese restaurant and you know how they have the Chinese New Year oh, yeah. the mats. Yep. <laughs> like, you know, and I know I'm the ox. And so I don't know, this vision came in and it's like stop fighting your body type. Your body type is just thick and it's strong. Hell yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna be a baby ox. And so yeah. I decided to um start going to this training called sexy fit and it's basically 45 minutes of cardio weights and like 
it's so hard. I mean, I did it today <laughs> and you're like literally dripping. Um, so I started that in January of 2018, not for any reason other than to just honor my body, which is just, it's, it's strong, Hell you yeah. know, <laughs> it just, it is. So, and then that's, you know, when I, that's the year that I got, you know, the Mandalorian Boom. and thank goodness I was doing that type of training. Cause I don't think that, I would have been able to handle the weight and the intensity of um, that costume if I hadn't been doing that. So, yeah. It's lines, hindsight. Lines. Yeah. Hindsight is always like, oh, the threads. That's my job. Yeah. That's what I do. All of the pieces. Just be authentically you. That's you right. Know? So Amazing. Amazing. I think that's great advice for anything, really. But do, yeah. do, So do you actually piggybacking off of that do you have any advice for people because i mean you do you do everything so it's hard to, to pinpoint so for people that want to we'll do categories so okay what advice would you have for someone who wants to get into the entertainment industry doing acting to mm -hmm. want to make their own music and mm -hmm. in general if somebody who wants to do what you're doing what advice would you give to them okay um let's see for entertainment um you know, it, it train, yeah. uh, go to classes, you know, um, and that's, it's always challenging because people are like, well, I don't have any money. It's like, okay. Um, if you want this and you want to be in it, go to central casting and, uh, start working as an extra, you know, yeah. maybe you'll then jump to and get some and pay attention when you're on set you know watch uh watch the other the stand-ins that come in and block scenes and stuff uh sure. learn you know uh just get some experience that way and uh, so then you'll be making a little bit of money you gotta hustle you know again like i said i had three jobs at one point yeah <laughs> well, that's what it takes else. like it takes a lot of dedication um, make sure that your, your plan, if you're trying for this, it can't be in the two year range, you know, it's gotta yeah. be five years to 10 years yep. minimum. Um, it's true. so yeah, classes, uh, and anything artistic acting, singing, dancing, it all is, it'll, it'll, it'll give you, it'll help you find who and what you are as far as your strengths and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, central casting and training, acting, dancing, singing, go to uh, community colleges, you know, even just, um, you know, going to those gymnastics classes, even if you're not a gymnast, just movement, that kind of thing. Yeah. Singing, same thing, train, you have to train um, and to be, you know, an independent artist, you know, which is, I definitely would recommend for so many reasons uh you got to write your own music so there's like online courses that you can take i actually went to nashville and uh you right know took, you know training there with some of the songwriters um and uh it's like ed sheeran said write every day it's not going to be a masterpiece yeah uh, but write something every day um for suit work and this is an important one yeah uh, yoga you have to do circuit training because uh, some of the guys that uh, have been on set that are super, super, super strong, mm -hmm. there has to be a very, very 50-50 balance of your cardiovascular strength uh, with your physical strength um, because your heart, <laughs> it takes a lot yeah. in there. Um, there's a lack of oxygen um, going to your muscles and stuff. So uh, yoga uh, you know, a circuit training and make sure more than the strength part, uh, cardio. So I yeah. like it. I like <laughs> it. To, and go on audition at Disneyland and at Universal Studios and at Six Flags Magic Mountain, uh, to get some, you know, some experience in the suits. So yeah. as, um, intense as, you know, a suit like Quill. Um, but, you know, just that's where you start. Right, so. right. You got to build up. That's the yeah. that's the road. Yes, that is the road. I love so, it. I love it. That, that is right. that is the way. <laughs> this is the way. And that's how you tie things up. <laughs> Boom. This was super fun. I had a great time. Hope you did as well. I did. So, so before I let you go, uh, I got to ask, where can people find you online to tell you how awesome you are? 
Oh my gosh, everywhere. Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Love so. it. Love yeah. it. Beautiful. So. Mm -hmm. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.